In this video, we'll review how to determine the end behavior of rational functions. In order to do this, we're going to separate and determine what kind of function we're dealing with. The first category we will look at would be the proper rational functions. These are examples of proper rational functions. Proper rational functions have the degree of the denominator greater than the degree of the numerator. That is the bigger exponents on the bottom. If you're dealing with a proper rational function, then as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, f of x will approach zero. This is true for all proper rational functions. Now, improper rational functions are going to be separated into two categories. The first category of improper rational functions are those where the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. For example, um, f of x and g of x here. For both of these, we have an x squared over an x squared. Anytime the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then the way to determine the end behavior, as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, it's going to be the quotient of the um, lead coefficients of the numerator divided by the denominator. And we'll look at an example of how to do this in just a moment. Now the other category of improper rational functions are those where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, meaning the biggest exponent is on top. For these, I have two examples again, f of x and g of x. The way we're going to find these ones is we'll go ahead and do the uh, quotient polynomial We'll divide out those leading coefficients and the leading exponents, and we'll figure out what we're left with. Whatever kind of polynomial we get, the end behavior will be the same as what the original function is. And again, we'll look at these two examples in just a moment. So let's start again with the proper rational functions. Anytime you have a proper rational function, such as these three, where the degree on the bottom is greater than the degree on the top, then we know that as x goes to either positive or negative infinity, f of x will always go to zero. So for all of these, f of x is going to go to zero. These are all proper rational functions, and this is true for all proper rational functions. Now for the next set, the improper rational functions, where the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, uh, we're going to go through and we're going to kind of set something kind of similar to what I'm going to show you here. Uh, the end behavior is really determined by the um, highest degree exponents. So in this f of x, we have a 3x squared over an x squared. And if I think about what happens when I reduce that, the 3x squared over an x squared is really just the x squareds cancel, and you're really left with an end behavior of 3. So as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote here where it's going to flatten out at 3, in which case the asymptote would be y equals 3. For g of x, we're really, if we multiplied this out, we'd have an x squared on top, and we'd have an x squared on the bottom. Well, when you reduce that, it becomes 1, so the end behavior here is going to be as x goes to positive or negative infinity, f of x is going to go to 1, because we're going to have that horizontal asymptotes for the end behavior, where y is 1. Now the other example for improper rational functions are where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, like my next two examples. So I'm going to look at the quotient polynomial. I'm going to divide these two polynomials, and I'll see what I'm left with. So if I take f of x here, where my highest degree um, term is at 3x to the fifth, and on the bottom I've got the highest degree one where it's an x squared, so if I think about what a 3x to the 5th over an x squared would divide to be, that would be a 3x cubed. Now a 3x cubed um, is going to be an odd degree polynomial, which means they're going to go to, um, one's going to go to positive infinity, one will go to negative infinity. Now because it's a positive 3x cubed, I'm basically going to look at a graph where the right side's going up and the left side's going down. That means as x goes to negative infinity, f of x is going to negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x is going to go up towards infinity. Again, the way I did this, I did the division. I found that I got a 3x cubed. It's an odd degree, meaning that the end behavior is going different directions. But because it's a positive 3x cubed, we know the left side goes down, right side goes up. The negative infinity goes to the negative infinity, and the positive goes to positive. Therefore, x goes to negative infinity, f of x is going to negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x is going to positive infinity. Now let's take a look at this next one. The next one, if I multiplied this out, the first piece, that x plus 2 quantity cubed, would be uh, producing an x cubed piece. And if we multiply that by another x on top, we'd get an x to the fourth. On the bottom, when we multiply, we'd get an x squared. So if we have an x to the fourth over an x squared, it reduces down to an x squared. So the end behavior of the original function g of x is going to have the same end behavior as an x squared function. Now this is an even degree, so that means they're both going to go the same direction for end behaviors. Because it's a positive x squared, we know they're both going to go up so that we know as x goes to either positive or negative infinity, f of x is going to go to positive infinity. If instead I'd been left with a negative x squared, 
then as x goes to positive or negative infinity, f of x would go to negative infinity. We just changed the sign there. All right, I hope this helps you understand how to do the end behavior of the rational functions, and thank you for watching.